In this video, I want to give a basic idea introduction to reduction of linear form. So let's say you've collected some data, okay? You've collected some data and you've made a graph of this data, okay? So let's say the graph looks something like this, for example, okay? Some points might be a little bit all over the place, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so then you might go, right, well, there seems to be having collected this data, some kind of relationship, the fact that as one's increasing, the other's increasing, but it's curved, it's not a straight line, okay? And you might think, well, um, I could fit a curve to this, perhaps, okay? And if I know that I've got a curve, I might then be able to predict or extrapolate beyond that date um, or uh, think of interpolating some data items in between, okay, so be able to figure those out. So you might think, right, well, this looks like there's a curve, okay, some curve that the data is attached to, and you might think, well, let's say it looks like some kind of um, polynomial, for example, so we're going to say that it's something like perhaps fitting a function of y equals a x to the n, okay? So a just multiplying, okay, allowing that stretch, and you've got this x to the n, okay? So because you don't know what that power is necessarily going to be. And so you think, right, okay, well, if that's the case, and now what I want to do is I want to check whether it's the case, because at the moment, that's all well and good thinking that it's going to be of that form, but we don't know what a is and we don't know what n is. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a linearization of this. So we go through a process of taking logarithms of both sides. The reason we're going to take logarithms is because of that power, OK? Makes it easier for ourselves. So I'm going to go through this process in the coming videos of how we get from that, and we go through this process of reducing to linear form, okay? So what you're going to get is something that might look like this, okay? Some kind of y equals mx plus c, a straight line equation. That's what we would be hoping, okay? If you can get from that to that, and I'm not saying that every equation that you start with, every curve, you can get to y equals mx plus c. But there are some that do. And this is one of those cases, OK? So you get to a straight line equation. Now, the reason why we might want a straight line equation is because it's much easier than to get the gradient and y-intercept of a straight line. So what we then do is we plot our new coordinates, x and y, and it gives us a straight line equation from which we can find c, from which we can work out the gradient m, OK? And then, if we could write a in terms of m, or rather m in terms of a, and c in terms of n, or whatever, OK? Then we can work backwards to figure out what a and n are. And that will then tell me the equation of this curve. So this is the concept of reducing to linear form. It's because we've got this data, we think this curve will attach to it, but the curve in question has unknowns. And we need to figure those out. Easiest way to do that is to reduce it to this linear form, estimate the value of c and m based on the data that I have, and then I can work backwards to get a and n and then solve the required problem. And from that, because I've now got an equation, I can then say, right, what would the value of, a, of y be when x is this? Say, I'd be able to find that point, or that point, or that point on the curve. Okay, and I could use it for predictions if I needed to. So that's like the basic idea of the process. And in these videos, we're going to go through the mechanics of how we actually do it.